Hello everyone, so today I'm going to talk about something pretty controversial in the XRP community and that's the buyback. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but it is controversial uh, and it's this whole XRP Unleashed documentary that I've been a part of. Um, I just want to kind of give my thoughts on on how I think everything was and you know some of the things that have been said on Twitter all about this documentary that I think are unjust. Um, and so I'll just explain my situation. Uh, Chris at Fruition Productions uh, and Maya, his wife, they invited me out to Los Angeles to film for the XRP Unleashed documentary. Um, certainly, at the beginning of all of it, I kind of, th I kind of thought, what on earth am I going to offer? <laughs> like it was big imposter syndrome. Um, because you've got people like Molly, people like Zach Rector, like really, really, really knowledgeable people on, on this topic. And I just felt like, man, these, these guys are fantastic in XRP, like the the fantastic people, Jimmy Valley, all these people. And I was like, man, how do I fit into this? <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes these things have an interesting way of communicating themselves to you. Um, and, and, and what I mean is you get involved in, in projects not because you think you should, but because others think you should. Um, and I found this out as, as time went on, and perhaps we'll get there as I continue talking about it. Um, but I got the notification like maybe a month and a half ago. And Chris said, we're going to be filming in the Batcave. <laughs> this is the Batcave that you can see here. Um, I've got a load of videos on my phone, but I'm not sure if... Oh, yeah, look, you can see here. You look great. I've got everything I, can... I've got everything I need to say, but I also forgot everything I need to say. <laughs> so that was me worrying just before we started filming. But we're in the, the Batcave where in the Dark Knight, the Batman movie, there's... the Batcave is in this studio. Um, and so they're making it like this super um, infinite room where you really can't see the end and there's atmosphere and all of that stuff. Now, this kind of gets into where we start. And this is me as well. Look, <laughs> this is funny. The guy's kind of running around me here. Um, looks straight out of a music video or something. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but basically... This is where I realized what my value was in this whole in this whole thing. And when you think about who they're going for in the audience of this documentary, because there's been a lot of kind of backlash about, you know, why are these people in it? Why don't you get the developers in to talk about it? Why, you know, focusing on on what I would say is the more complex side of things. Um, now, I'm not saying these people are like not suited to be in this on this documentary absolutely they are the, you know everyone in all the different areas has has justified their ability to be in here in the documentary but you just have to look at this with a bit more level headedness and lot and in a logical nature if you've got a documentary that talks about you know oh, there's these specific functions on the XRP ledger and it's all like these jargon words that developers will just use because they operate at that level. Um, what you end up with is a documentary that people, the average person won't watch because they'll watch it and go, oh, this is way over my head. Can't do that. That's not what you go for when you make a documentary. When you make a documentary, you're trying to educate the masses on a topic that they didn't uh, previously know about. And you're bringing them into the fold, right? So naturally, with that understanding, you don't want to bring people in and just overwhelm them with information. Um, you don't want to overwhelm them with like, I don't want to, this isn't like disrespecting anyone on the cast or anything, but you don't want to bring, bring it in and make it feel too intelligent for them. You know, you want to build them up to that point. And so, you know, I shared the same mentality as many people. It's like, oh, we should get, you know, the smart people on there and it should be it should be inclusive, all the developers, all the XRPL guys, all the everyone. Um, but then as you realize, like you you start to think about it. 
okay if this is going on netflix for example um which it may do um and you've got millions of people potentially scrolling through and seeing the thumbnail for this uh documentary what do you want to how do you want to engage those people you don't want to alienate them so you want to come in slow and build them up towards the end so that they become a knowledgeable person in that area by the end of the documentary um and so because you have to start slow you have to start with people who explain things simply like in in plain english you well you have to let everyone know how there's this massive thing called ethgate in the background you have to let them know there's a big cons like not conspiracy cuz it's kind of real but you have to let them know there's this big thing happening and then also we need to teach you why that's important from the foundations and so then it made all the sense in the world why i would be in it because i've made my channel based on explaining things simply so I, I i'm not i'm not like tooting my own horn here when i say it but i do explain things very simply and i do appeal to a beginner audience and that's that's really the the channel i've deliberately gone down because of my skill set and so yes i think somebody like me i mean find someone else like me as well um and and they should also be in this segment to explain things simply um because ultimately you don't just need to appeal to um the the beginner nature of the people who are going to watch this but you also need to appeal to the different interests and preferences of those people so for example let's just put me and Zach Zach knows like way more than me <laughs> so I'm not I'm not putting him in this in in the beginner uh, category um but I'm just giving him as an example let's say you've got me and Zach we're similar in a lot of ways but we're different in some ways as well so if we were both at the beginning of the documentary there'll be some people who prefer Zach perfectly fine you need different characters for people to kind of hold on to and so you need variety and that's why you know there'll be there'll be people watching this show that are, are like I want to see a woman talk about this and they'll connect more with a woman well there's Molly you know there's such a variety of people being involved and I think that's just that's just really important so I left all of that thinking well actually you know it was valuable for me to be in there I play my role um and I don't, I just don't see why people are getting all all wound up by this because my my question really is you know if Molly isn't in it if I'm not in it if Jimmy's not in it you know if if whoever's in it if John Deaton's not in it I guess everyone's on John Deaton's side like forever um but if if these fundamental people in the community aren't on it first of all that would be a bad move in terms of marketing because you want people involved who are involved in the community right I don't know how I I could possibly be unreasonable in saying that um and and also who else would talk to the community to the to a beginner audience to to un people who don't know about XRP who else would talk to them other than people who literally make their living talking to people about this <laughs> you know it's like we've been training for this why why would we have um wh why would we have someone who's never talked on camera about XRP as as you know to to talk about XRP it makes no sense we spend every day all day talking about XRP and we hit the we we hit the the duo we hit the marketing side where we have reach which is what you want for a documentary to get some attention and we also have all the training of how to talk about it <laughs> like i think you are being incredibly unreasonable to think that people like me or or Molly sh like shouldn't be in it it's like what that's all we talk about every day um it just makes no sense like let's read this people are calling uh uh doing the documentary doing it with love they're not expecting payment yeah like there's no payment <laughs> there's a, i guess there's a question are we getting paid for all of this there's, there is no payment um i did get flown out to la and the hotel and and even went to a la lakers game which was awesome um but no in terms of like payment for the thing in terms of like royalties or anything that's that doesn't exist um 
but yeah, they have to fly talent out to the locations. They've done that for everyone, I believe. Um, um, I, I could go through this for, forever, but um, there's certainly it's. I will say, like the 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 production of this whole thing has been tremendously professional. It's like really high level stuff. And as someone who's produced videos, like nice pr nice videos, not just these like webcam videos, but nice videos, you can you can recognize the level of detail and the quality that's going to come out the other end. Um, in terms of like my my parts of this show, um, I don't know what's going to make it into the cut, but I certainly took the role of an explainer. You know, I think that space was created or hired. The whole back cave was hired in the first place. As a, as a as a as a space for explain explain explanation i can't talk so you know i was there to explain some of the complex things very simply um you know i don't get into the weeds of like eth gate or the xrpl because that's not my that's not my wheelhouse my wheelhouse is explaining conceptually the difficult things um very simply and i might even get a really cool spot with some vfx um so that's really cool I just wanted to let everyone know about the reality of that documentary and how everyone's really out of control. If you're if you're in support of everything that's happening and you're really excited to see it, um, you'll have to let me know in the comments. And also before you go, um, there were conversations. I mentioned this in another video. There were conversations of having a private screening of a special cut of the documentary in London. Um, I will be your host of that. So we'll meet at a like a small theater in London, get a load of people. The, the tickets will be paid, but it's to pay the rental of the space um, rather than for profit. Um, and so you can come down, uh, fill out that that theater, come come meet and we can all talk and watch that documentary cut together. I think that'd be a really cool idea. If you want to see a London premiere, or not a, not premiere, private screening, of the documentary then contact fruition productions and say we want a london one or let me know in the comments that you'd like a london one uh, and we can make sure that happens because that'd be that'd be tremendous fun anyway i want to let you know that this exit strategy workshop that i created is like if you haven't taken it already we're running out of time <laughs> the the bull run is starting i don't know if you can tell it's starting and it won't it won't wait for you um if you don't have these exit take profit points you're going to be screwed in my opinion many other people have taken the, the workshop people even brought to tears about the stress relief of this process and system i highly advise you take it there is no risk to you zero risk because it's a thir well, 30 day money back guarantee if you don't get value you take all of the lessons you, you you do all of the steps in the process and you still don't think it was valuable i'll give you money back like it really is there's no risk for you getting started with that workshop the link is in the description. Stay emotionless. I'll see you in the next one.